burner control system in the burner control system sequential control logic and protective interlocks are being used this session is coming under the broader topic of thermal power plant control systems burner control system the most critical consideration in operating the fuel burning equipment of a boiler is the hazard of furnace explosion a furnace explosion can cause catastrophic damage to the boiler equipment and endanger the safety of plant operating personnel furnace explosion the most likely cause of a furnace explosion is the spontaneous and rapid combustion of any accumulated unburned combustibles in the furnace or along the gas path of the boiler explosive mixture of combustibles the combustion is likely to occur when an excessive quantity of unburned combustibles is mixed with air and the mixture reaches an explosive proportion in the presence of sufficient ignition energy from electric charges hot slag or sparks inadvertently introduced into the furnace operating experience shows that such an accumulated mixture is often the result of repeated unsuccessful attempts to light off a burner fuel leakage into the furnace through idle burners sudden loss of burner flame during operation or any other situations that leave the fuel and air mixture unburned in the furnace thus any operation that can possibly result in such a situation must be prevented and any combustibles present must be burned or completely purged from the furnace every burner control system is designed with these considerations in mind request it is hope that this session is going to be useful to you please press like please subscribe the burners in a multiple burner furnace are grouped for operation according to their physical location in the furnace the boiler manufacturer's particular design of a furnace will dictate whether the burners in a burner group will be operated singly in pairs or as a group operating a burner involves manipulating the fuel valve air register that is damper igniter ignition fuel valve and other accessories associated with the burner at the group level operation involves starting and stopping the equipment 
common to the group for a pulverized coal fueled boiler the group equipment includes the feeders pulverizer primary air fans and air dampers around the pulverizer this diagram shows the feeder pulverizer primary air fan and dampers around the pulverizer the operation of the various components in the group must be coordinated to ensure that fuel and air are admitted into the furnace through the burners in proper order and in correct proportion to avoid the accumulation of any unburned combustibles and without any unwanted ignition source the procedure must be repeatable and identical for all the burners which makes it very conducive to the application of a sequential control logic a typical burner control system consists of three parts burner control master fuel trip and furnace purge operation the burner control portion of the system involves the starting and stopping of individual burners or burner groups for a pulverized coal fuel boiler typical burner start operation is as follows check that the secondary air flow is adequate put the air register in the light of position check the ignition fuel supply is available initiate the spark or other ignition source place the igniter into service by opening the ignition fuel shut off valves check the ignition flame and shut down the igniter if the flame is not detected within a specified time period initiate the master fuel trip if these are the burners of the first pulverizer placed into service this diagram shows flame detectors some details are mentioned you may like to go through them the flame is having three parts visible infrared and ultraviolet check that the primary air flow is adequate open the coal valve on the coal pipelines from the pulverizer to the burners being started start the pulverizer start the coal feeder check the coal flame and shut down the burner and igniter if the flame is not detected within a specified time period pulverizer and coal feeder are shown in this diagram you can also see the burner shut off valves in the diagram
the operation is considered successful when the main that school flame is detected within the preset time period in general the igniters are kept in operation during low load operation to help maintain flame stability in the furnace they can be shut down at the operator's discretion when the boiler load reaches a certain minimum level and there is sufficient turbulence to enhance flame stability the burner control system is designed for remote operation from the central control room of the plant the sequence can be operated in either manual or automatic mode in the manual mode the operator initiates each step of the sequence in the automatic mode the operator needs only to initiate the first step and the system logic automatically cycles the equipment through the remaining steps in either case the logic checks the permissives for each step before it is allowed to proceed to the next step and the sequence is stopped automatically if any prescribed unsafe operating conditions are detected similarly a shutdown sequence is also provided typically an operator panel with push buttons and indicating lights or a crt based control is provided for the operator to select the manual or automatic mode and to initiate each step when in the manual mode with all feedback information displayed to show the status of the components and the system the key to safe burner operation is to shut off the burner immediately at the slightest indication of any accumulation of unburned combustibles or if ignition energy is insufficient to sustain the fuel burning process no practical means exist to monitor the accumulation of unburned combustibles or the ignition energy its existence can only be inferred from the lack of burner flame when the fuel is being admitted into the furnace through the burners a flame detected or no flame detected condition for a burner is an indication of whether the fuel admitted is being burned or not for this reason flame detection plays a vital role in the functioning of the burner control system a variety of techniques exist for flame detection in the next few slides the various methods of flame detection and variety of flame detection equipments are shown flame monitor complete assembly you may go through the finer details mentioned here
flexible fiber optics used in a tilting burner you may go through the finer details mentioned here video based thermography system the detectors used for utility boilers are those sensing the light emitted by the burning fuel ultraviolet and infrared detectors or the flickering frequency of the light produced by the burning process flicker detectors the selection is largely dependent on the type of fuel burned burner design and the particular design consideration of the boiler and the burner control system in general igniter flame is monitored on an individual basis the monitoring philosophy for main flame varies depending on the firing pattern of the boiler in a wall fired furnace a detector is typically installed for each burner In a tangentially fired furnace, the detectors are shared between burners on adjacent elevations. The main flame is monitored either on an individual or group basis depending on the manufacturer's arrangement of the burners. The purpose of the master fuel trip is to protect the boiler by automatically stopping all fuel supply to the furnace on detection of any unsafe operating condition. The National Fire Protection Association has specific guidelines for the tripping operation for utility boilers that is standard for the prevention of furnace explosion implosions in multiple burner boiler furnaces this code is accepted by designers and manufacturers throughout the power industry as establishing minimum standards for operation and for systems design of multi burner boilers the institute of electrical and electronics engineers also provides recommendations for tripping in the I triple E guide for protection, interlocking, and control of fossil fuel unit connected steam stations. In addition, each boiler manufacturer has standard recommendations for boiler operation that address the specific characteristics of their boilers. The NFPA code <coughs> recommends that a running boiler be tripped on the occurrence of any unsafe conditions. Unsafe conditions. Examples of these conditions are loss of all forced draft fans, loss of all induced draft fans. combustion air flow below minimum excessive high or low furnace pressure loss of all flames and 
partial loss of flame introducing hazardous operating conditions other tripping conditions other tripping conditions may also cause an automatic master fuel trip these conditions are determined by the station designer on a case by case basis low boiler drum level high drum level loss of control power to the control system low fuel supply pressure condition for gas or oil fired boilers low circulation pump pressure differential for forced circulation boilers low feed water flow for once through boilers and other conditions as required by the boiler manufacturer's design to enhance the reliability of the tripping logic redundant sensing devices are used where practical to detect unsafe operating conditions that will automatically activate the master fuel trip on a boiler trip all fuel supply is immediately shut off this is accomplished by closing all fuel valves main fuel gas or oil supply valves gas and oil burner valves igniters valves and coal burner line valves and stopping pulverizers and feeders air flow control is rejected to manual mode and the air flow remains constant for post trip furnace pours the pours logic is used to ensure an adequate air flow supply through the furnace to get rid of any unburned combustibles in the furnace following a master fuel trip and before lighting of the first burner after a trip this is generally accomplished by opening all air and flue gas dampers in the boiler and running the forced draft and the induced draft fans for a specific time period typically 5 minutes to ensure that the air volume in the furnace is turned over several times during the pulse operation forced draft fans and induced draft fans are shown in this diagram prevention of furnace implosions the prevention of furnace implosions shall be addressed in a subsequent session request it is hope that this session was useful to you please press like please subscribe